So the prevalence of vertebral fractures is around 10% in patients with ankylosing spondylitis. There is a seven-fold increased fracture risk in ankylosing spondylitis pa patients. And uh, these are hyperextension fractures which involve all the three columns. Most workers advocate long segment fixation and fusion in these fractures. So we came across a difficult situation of three such cases uh, who are medically high risk and unfit for surgery. So we had to think about an out of the box procedure under local anesthesia. And we did and the patient uh, uh, got complete pain relief and immediate mobilization. So the first case goes like this. There's a 61 year old gentleman who suffered a fall domestic uh, with AS and he got, uh, he got a fracture with excruciating pain and he was managed conservatively for six weeks. There was no improvement. His VAS was 10 on 10 and the, his neurology was normal. Uh, he was operated previously by the author for a T910 laminectomy for myelopathy. The plain radiograph. CT and MRI of the thoracolumbar spine uh, revealed undisplaced fractures of the AS, uh, uh, fra uh, fra features of AS and a transverse fracture through all the three columns of T12 vertebrae. So what were the treatment options here? Long segment fixation. So the warnings, uh, his cardiac condition was extremely poor, his EF was 15%, so physicians said don't operate, anesthetists said too risky. So what to do now? So long segment fixa instrument fixation would carry a high risk of mortality. So we thought about, we pondered and we came out of with a out of the box and maybe a crazy procedure. We thought about percutaneous vertebroplasty under local anesthesia. Cook's needle was placed bilaterally in the vertebral body at the site of the fracture through the pedicles and 3 ml of bone cement was injected and the patient co was counseled that this is an experimental uh, procedure. So there we go, the gamble worked and uh, oh. I'm sorry the video isn't working but that is a patient walking and uh, the patient was encouraged to resume walking and the follow-up CT showed adequate filling of the fracture and uh, he had excellent improvement in ODI and VA scores uh, at two years. Then the second illustration is of an 88 year old gentleman known as a known case of AS. He presented with a fall. Uh, he too had no neurological compromise and a T12 uh, vertebral fracture. And uh, his CT scan showed a transverse fracture at T2. MRI showed hyperintense signal on T2 images, indicating fluid filling the fracture site, resembling a pseudoarthrosis. So he also was a known case of diabetes and hypertension. 2D echo showed only the uh, LVH, MR, TR, and severe PH. EF was only 30%. So we did a vertebral vertebroplasty under local anesthesia, and he had immediate and dramatic pain relief. He was encouraged to walk within four hours of the surgery, and his VAS and ODI scores were maintained at two years. So I hope this one works. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He, this is uh, post-operatively the patient after four hours is walking without any pain. So this were our outcomes. Pre-op ODI was around, was uh, at the range of 72 to 84. Post-op was around 16 to 15 and follow-up was a uh, minimum of four and pre-op OAS was 10. Post-op was around three and follow-up was one. So thoracolumbar fractures in AS. Ankylosing spondylitis is bamboo spine. So th this stiffness is susceptible to spinal fractures. All these spinal fractures are mainly three column fractures and they behave like a long bone fracture. So as we plate long bones, the long, long segmented instrumented fusion is advocated. But what do we do for surgically unfit patients? They are high mortality. Uh, there is no such protocol for such thing. And brace treatment is questionable of relief with poor results because there can be pseudoarthrosis. So the strategies to deal with such patients is lacking in the literature. So percutaneous vertebroplasty under local anesthesia stands out as an excellent option here. The pain and disability complicated by comorbidities in our patients was so extreme that an unconventional out-of-the-box management strategy had to be planned. The principle is to fill the void. It, it either acts as a tension band or just continues the anterior uh, column. Uh, anterior column. So the successful outcome in the first operated case gave us guts to use it in the other two cases. So why we need to do it early. Why we have to do it aggressively is because at th there can uh, if, if we don't treat it aggressively, it can cause potential lysis and uh, profound instability at the fracture site and fibrous tissue formation. Uh, it's simple, it's less time consuming, it's associated with minimal mobility. The clinical benefit is exemplary in terms of quick pain relief and early mobility on the same day of the procedure is beneficial because of you know, cardiorespiratory symptoms in these patients whose age-related mobility is compounded by restrictive lung disease and bed rest. So long segmented instrumented fusion may not be a blanket treatment for all patients with AS, but the dramatic pain relief and excellent recovery makes percutaneous vertebroplasty an invaluable asset in the treatment armamentorium for this highly mobile subset of patients. It should be performed early before profound instability or neurological insult sets in and that would necessitate bigger and morbid surgeries. Uh, thank you very much.